in my earlier videos uh, i was talking about buying a mill and a lathe i won this alient rt2 at an auction recently alient is considered one of the better made bridgeport clones as it was owned by bridgeport employees who designed it with extra bearings and much better components it was in fact made by sharp in taiwan anyway here is the footage from the auction and how i moved it into my garage I really liked its size compared to the other mills at the location. Moreover, replacement parts were still available for these mills from Sharp. And also, I didn't want to go through rigors and shipping, uh, so I really wanted to win this mill as it was in a driving range to my location. So, I kind of paid more than what I would consider a good deal. I also wanted to bid on this Okuma 21 by 30 lathe. It is such a special size and uh, it was in a very good condition, but it almost went for 6k plus fees. Uh, so I couldn't buy this for that price. By the way, I also got a Precision Matthews 12360T lathe and I'll be making a video about it in a few days. So be sure to check it out. Here are some other items from the auction. I won a few other items for the mill and uh, some R8 tooling. On the day of the pickup, I rented a tilt bit trailer from Sunbelt Rental. I never knew these guys existed and they have such cool equipment to rent. I have an inclined driveway, so I chose a tilt bit trailer. I assumed it would straighten the bed when tilted on an incline. It really did help a lot uh, and it made it so easy. If you have a level driveway, you can also rent a lift bed which goes straight up and down. These auctioneers loaded the mill onto the trailer. These guys were really cool and very helpful. Most auctions require you to bring your own rigger or forklift to move the machines. But these guys had their own forklifts and helped even with securing the straps.
I should have made my own wooden pallet, uh, but I didn't prepare well. So I had to use some scrap plywood and an oversized pallet we found around the area. This made it very difficult when removing it under from the mill once it was in my garage. So if you're doing something similar, uh, it's better to build your own pallet or maybe pick a stronger one with a smaller footprint. He's down now. Uh, bring her down. Come down. Here you can see the driveway incline from the opposite house. So that is what I was dealing with and I strapped the mill from all four directions to the trailer. So it wouldn't tilt and fall when moving on an incline. It was easier than I imagined it would be. So if you are doing something similar then be well prepared, secure the load and go for it slowly and it should be fine. Pushing the mill onto the garage uh, gave me a few scares, but it was fairly easy due to the tilt bed on an incline made it very manageable. 
and a pallet jack really helps. This mill has a 2 HP 3 phase motor and uh, I only have 1 phase 220 volts from a dryer plug. So I am using a Tico 3 HP VFD. In the next video I will post on how I got this mill off the pallet, how I wired and programmed the VFD and a few issues we encountered when setting it up. I also want to build a small pallet jack accessible uh, metal stand to be permanently under the mill. So we will be making that in the next video. Lathe video also will be posted very soon. Please feel free to subscribe if you like these videos. See you guys in the next one.